This video is going to show you the ins and outs of getting started with the Planetarium software free to download on your computer called Stellarium. Now to start, yes, you want the downloaded desktop version. There is a version that goes on your phone. There's a version that you can use on web. Both are great. Not what I'm going to be going over here. You can download the latest version by going to stellarium.org. I will link that up in the description down below. Why? Would you want to use this software? There are lots of planning softwares on your phone for taking photographs of the night sky. I like using Planet Pro. There's also photo pills. But here's the thing. People will say to me all the time, oh, well, you must have a background in astronomy or you must want to be like an amateur astronomer. No, I just like taking pictures of the night sky. But you have to know where things are at, when they're going to be, how they rise and set. And the best way to learn that is using Stellarium. So I want to get you up and running with Stellarium really quickly with the basic things you need to know to run the software so that you can get in there and you can start to understand the movement of our Earth in relation to our universe and our galaxy. And you can start to see where is stuff going to be in the night sky. So this is Stellarium. This is the desktop version. You can see I'm on 0.20.2. No idea if that's the most recent version. I haven't downloaded it in a while, but it'll be fairly similar. I want us to look at the overall interface first. So what you're going to see right now is a snapshot based on the time and date when I'm recording this. At the very bottom, we can see down here, there's a little bit of information. Um, it says Earth, Halifax, my field of view, the time and date. In the upper right hand corner there's some information here that we might not know about yet um, there is actually though two toolbars and you saw one of them pop up when i came down here we do have a toolbar along the very bottom and on the left hand side when you roll over there's a toolbar here these are the two that are important in this upper right hand corner these are actually oculars which can be useful when you get down the line if you're um, planning things with scopes and things like that not something we're going to get into today. And for our basic setup, you don't need to do anything here. What we do need, however, is to understand both of these toolbars. We're going to start with the one on the left first, because you see right now my spot down here, my location says Earth, Halifax, 23 mirrors. I'm just outside of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, that is on the east coast of Canada. We're pretty close to sea level here. Um, I want my Stellarium set here. This is going to give me the right time and date. It's going to give me the right view of things in the sky. If you're at a very different latitude from me, everything you see as we go through Stellarium is not going to be the same for where you live. So you want to have this set up for where you live by default. It's set up in Paris. I used to say like, oh, maybe they just all want us to be in Paris with baguettes and riding around on bicycles and going to the Eiffel Tower. No, the developers are from there. That makes a heck of a lot more sense. So we're going to go to our location. This is over here. Um, you can see when you roll over it, there's also these little brackets that have the F keys. So you can also just hit F6 and it'll take you here. This is where you can go in and choose your location. There's a few different ways you can do this. Uh, if you click in different spots, it will auto sort of feed different places that are there. That's just, it takes a lot of time. I recommend coming in here and typing out. So here, Halifax, two Halifaxes, one cross the pond for me in Britain. I'm in Halifax, Canada. So click on Halifax, Canada. Now, what you're going to see is use current location as default. So let's say I go in um, instead, I'll go in and do Toronto, Canada. Um, so this takes me over to Toronto. I could click use current location as default. Now, every time I open up Stellarium, it is going to default to this. I highly recommend that you put in wherever you're at. And if you live somewhere more obscure, just find the nearest city close to you and put that in and you should be able to find it. If that doesn't work, you can type in your latitude and longitude here. That's another way that you can do it. Once you have that set, click use current location as default, and then you don't have to do this again. <laughs> this is a set it and forget it. Now, if you are planning to go and shoot somewhere else, like let's say you're going on a really cool vacation to Peru, yeah, you could put in the place in Peru that you're going to here and set it for that, um, for that session. So it's important to know how to get to this. But once you set your home location, 
you don't have to do it again. Every time you open up, instead of being transported to Paris, you'll be at your home location. The next thing I want us to see inside of this toolbar is the date and time window. Very important. Now you see mine kind of came up down low, so I'm gonna bring it up. This is the, the amazing thing about Stellarium is that you can go in and look at any time and date, whatever you want, 50 years in the future, a thousand years in the past, it doesn't matter. You can type in whatever time and date you want here. So let's say I am planning a vacation in the summer. So I'm gonna go to the summer and I'm going to say, okay, well, it's daytime right now, let's go to nighttime. So I'm just gonna go forward to nighttime now I'm starting to go forward to nighttime and oh, look at this. I'm pointed to the south already. Look what's popping up in the sky right there. There's the Milky Way. Now, if you are pointed um, to the west or the north, etc., you're not gonna see that coming up. Just so happens it was defaulting to the south. Immediately I can see on July 18th, what time the Milky Way is rising up, the direction that it's going to be in. So this date and time is very, very important. Uh, you can do a Julian day as well. Of course, I just do our regular um, day and time in the Gregorian calendar. So, you know, it's a little bit <laughs> easier on my brain. So that's our date and time here. This lets us go through and look any time forward in the future. The one thing that I will say is this date and time will be based off of your time zone. So if you are looking at a place that is in a different time zone than you, you have to calculate the difference in time. So if I'm looking at a place that's on the uh, West Coast, which is four hours behind me, this time will be my local time, will not be the local time of the place that you're going to. So make sure that you do take that into account. If your location is somewhere different, than where you're currently at, a different time zone, you have to do that calculation in your brain. I know we have to do some math. Now, otherwise here, there's a couple more things. The search window is useful because this lets us go and search out specific targets. So for instance, if I wanted to photograph something other than the Milky Way itself, um, if I wanted to photograph a specific meteor shower, a specific comet, if I wanted to go in and find a specific deep sky target, like I wanted to see where Andromeda was or where the Rosette Nebula was, I can come here into the search window and I can type any of that in. So if I go in here and type Andromeda, all of a sudden you see I have multiple options coming up. Now, if I were to hit enter, it is going to take me to whichever option is currently highlighted. So if I want to say Andromeda Galaxy, then I would go here. Now on my keyboard, I hit enter and it's going to take me and switch me around and show me here's Andromeda in the sky. Now, the great thing that happens here is as I go backwards and forwards in time, it's going to lock on Andromeda and it's going to show me where it's at as I move through time. So this is our search window that we have here. Underneath that is our configuration window. I'm not gonna go too in depth in here. There's a lot. This software, we are, it's not even just the tip of the iceberg. Like we've taken a small shaving of the top of the iceberg to go into our glass to have our drink, maybe not quite um, neat. It's the smallest amount that I'm showing you here today. So in this configuration window, there's a lot of stuff. We're not going to go into all of it. The, what I do want to show you is basically your information. So when I typed in Andromeda, I only had two things up here. By default, you're going to have a lot more. So it's probably going to have all available, or it might even have um, a short, which um, would look a little something like this. But you're probably going to have something like this come up. There's a lot of information. And frankly, my head's covering most of it here. You don't need to see it because of how much stuff there is. You don't need to know all of this. For most of us here, if we're just trying to use Stellarium to see where stuff is in the night sky so that we can start to photograph it, we don't need all of this info. So I have um, a customized information and I just like to have the name, the um, azimuth and the altitude and the visual magnitude. So I like to have the name so I can see, okay, this is actually, <laughs> what it is, um, the azimuth and altitude, that helps me just uh, plan for actually when I'm out shooting, uh, and the visual magnitude, because that's like, okay, can I actually see it um, by eye or uh, can I not? Um, so that just helps uh, me with the specific things I want. You maybe turn all that off, just leave the name on. It's up to you. 
I don't like having though a full screen of information that I cannot use. So in our left hand screen, that's what we're going to be using here. There are other things in here. I don't use them um, and you're not going to use them when you first start out. Then we get down here to the bottom. Now, when we were looking at um, the just going forward to being in July of this year, and it's like, oh, bam, there's the Milky Way. I could see I was pointing to the south. That's because I had the uh, actual cardinal points on. There are a lot of options down here. And the ones that I want to draw your attention to are these three and this little section here. You'll see that there is a ground. Now, right now it's pretty dark, so we can't really see the ground. But if we come back in here with the date and time and we back back out, now we can start to see, oh, there's the ground. And you can have different options. That is one of the things you can do over here in the sky and viewing options. You can have different options for what the ground looks like. If you turn this off, all of a sudden it's like we're not on Earth. Earth no longer exists and we can just see space around us in a 360 degree view. Um, I find it very useful to know where the horizon line is at. So I leave the ground on. Cardinal points, turns those cardinal points on and off. Again, um, I do have the azimuth up here, but I like to just be very quickly able to be like, oh, northeast. Well, I'm actually looking for the Milky Way. I'm going to come over here to the south because I know that the Milky Way rises up in the south. So I know if I'm looking towards the south, I, you know, it doesn't matter. Am I in the southeast? Oh, here it is. I can move over. I know I'm going to be able to start to see the Milky Way that way. So I like to have the cardinal points on. The other one is atmosphere. Now, atmosphere is going to do two things. It's going to show you when it becomes night. So if I back up here, we see sunset. Now, as I go forward, I'm starting to see more stars come out and I'm starting to see it's blue. So we're still in blue hour. And then I'm starting to see now, okay, now we're into full dark. So the atmosphere will show you that. If you turn atmosphere off, doesn't matter. So you're like here, oh, eight o'clock. Perfect. Look at that. There's the Milky Way. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a uh, summer. It's still, still sunlight out. You're not going to see it. The other thing that happens with atmosphere is that this, and this is a very, don't use this as your main planning tool for light pollution, but this is trying to show you an approximation of what you will see um, or be able to capture based on the light pollution. So if I turn atmosphere off, you'll see all of a sudden we have a way more um, detailed Milky Way. If your nearest place that you live in is like New York City, you're going to find that the Milky Way looks really faint because it's trying to emulate all of that light pollution. So if you are trying to find the Milky Way, if that's the reason that you're using Stellarium, it might be useful to turn the atmosphere off so that you can start to actually see it and it has some more contrast. Um, but remember, please, please, please remember that you can easily go to daytime and you'll kind of get it because it shows the ground during daytime, but it doesn't show the sky. Um, and so that can get to be a little bit confusing. So I do tend to leave my atmosphere on, but it's important to know that the atmosphere exists down here. Now, in terms of the other things that you have here, I don't use most of the other things down here. You can uh, turn them on and off. You can see like here, this is going to show you deep sky objects. When it's like, Ooh, okay, there's a lot of things. And you can start to look around and see like, okay, what exists? What's here in the night sky? You can search for anything. Now, the great thing about this is let's say I go in here. Oh, and I, uh, type in Orion. Now, what just happened, this is good, I like to make mistakes when I'm recording my videos. What just happened is I typed Orion in before I clicked in here. And so it used the keyboard shortcuts and it brought up some things here. I'll get rid of that after I, I go here to Orion. So I've got Orion selected, I'll hit enter. You see, it brings me underground because Orion isn't up at night um, in in July. If I go forward to say September and I go through the night, now I can start to see, okay, here's Orion in the night sky. So now I can see Orion. Now I put on the constellation art by typing R. I can just turn that off. All Most of the things in here, you'll see they have little um, brackets that those are your keyboard shortcuts for them. So there are tons of keyboard shortcuts here. And if you go into the search window and you start typing, and then you look and you're like, what just happened? Why are there all of these things? For instance, like maybe you hit 
um, E and you're like, why are these lines here? Well, you uh, clicked for the equatorial grid with E. So there can be things here um, that will pop up and show up if you're typing. But if you do search for something and it just goes to black, you're underground. So that means that it's not visible at the time and date that you're looking for. So try different time and dates and you can start to see the movement. So here I can start to see, okay, in September, the um, Orion is rising up um, at around, oh, looks like maybe about quarter after two, Orion is starting to rise up and Orion is coming up through the night um, and is up very high when it's getting to be morning in September. So you can pick anything that you're interested in looking for. Now, if you're looking specifically for the Milky Way, I personally like to look for the stars that are nearby. So I will type in Antares and I know that Antares is near the Milky Way. Now we can see um, we've gone underground. So why don't we come back? There we go. We come back to early night, which is when you will have the Milky Way up in the sky in September. And I can see here, okay, here's Antares. Antares is in Scorpius, um, which is over here to this side of the Milky Way. And that's always going to bring me to it. You could also look for Sagittarius if you wanted to. Sagittarius is here, a little bit more visible in late season Milky Way versus early season Milky Way. You have Scorpius over here that's more visible. So you can start to go in and search for whatever you want inside of this program. And you can look at any time. You don't just have to do 2023, you can do 2070, like you can do literally any time. And you can start to understand the movement of the sky. And that's going to be really key for when you are actually getting out there and being under the night sky, orienting yourself, understanding the movement of the earth in relationship to the stars, and timing for when you want to be out. People ask me all the time, like, what time do I go out and shoot this? I'm at this location in this place. And it's very easy to find that out. All you need to do is put in your location here, get your date and time up, and put in the object. And then it will follow that object, move it until it's up above the sky and look and see where it's at. You can use these cardinal points, or if you want to get even more in detail, you can use the azimuth and the altitude, and that information will be there and available for everything. So I hope that this has been useful for you, that you've learned something about Solarium. My recommendation would be that you download the program and you give yourself some time just to play around with it. Think about the things that you would like to see in the night sky and think about what you would like to photograph in the night sky. Spend some time seeing when it rises and sets, how it moves through the sky, go forwards and backwards in time, for your location specifically. And you will find that the next time that you're out at night and you're looking up at the stars, they're actually going to start to make sense. And the more you do this, the easier it will be. And you'll get to the point where people say like, oh, are you like an amateur astronomer? And you're like, no, I just take pictures. Thank you for watching here with me today. If you want more, you can subscribe to my channel. I also have a podcast. It's called After Dark Photography Podcast. I'll have a link to that down in the show notes. Um, I also do trainings. It's my jam teaching people how to photograph the night sky. I'd love for you to come along with them. Um, hop on to my newsletter list. There will be a link down below. Uh, and I would love to see you there. Thank you so much. I wish you clear nights and starry skies.